Okay. Let me get back to this store. This uh, this um, reconstructed but unre regenerated. Okay, I'm gonna start here. I'm just randomly gonna start somewhere. Okay. Excuse me. Well, excuse me again. That was a big one. Okay. The Gospel of Progress is a curious development which does not reflect great credit on the supposed cap uh capacity of our species from for founding its own behavior. Eventually the formula may evolve its practice uh practice practitioners in self torture or suicide just as ready as in the enjoyment of life. In most societies men man has adapted himself to environment with plenty of intelligence to secure easily his material necessities from the grateful bounty of nature. That and then ordinarily he concludes a trace a truce with nature and he and nature seems to live on terms mutual respect and amity and his loving arts religion and philosophies come spontaneous into being these are the blessings of peace but the latter day society latter day societies have been seized not quite so violently as our American one with the strange idea that the humanity that the human uh, destiny is not to secure an honorable peace with nature but to wage an unrelentingly war on nature men therefore determine to conquer nature to a degree which is quite beyond reason so far as specific human advancement is concerned and which enslaves them to toil and turn over. Man is boastfully declared to be a natural scientist essentially uh, whose strength is capable of crushing and making over all his own desires with brute material materiality which is nature. But in his infinite connect, contention with his maternal, maternal, material, mater, materially, uh, he real is really cap, capturing to it. His engines transform the face. Of nature and little, but when a little, but when they have been perfected, his most in, invent he must invent new engines that will perform even more uh, hero, hero, heroically. Okay, uh, apparently, this is talking about the. The engine. Okay. Which, yeah. 1930, you gotta think, yeah. The cars have been around for a while. Okay, let me get back. And anyways, the next engine of his invention, even though it is, even though it be an engine which is to invade 
the material atom and exploit the most secret treasure treasury of nature's wealth will be a physical engine and the man who uses it will be engaged in substantially the same struggle with as with the primitive man with the hoe and yeah it's talking about the the spade hoe because if a little kid's listening to this i had one kid do that to me and, uh it's just the spade i call it well now you can't even say that it's a little shovel okay let me get back to here because I just ran off on a tangent. Didn't mean to, but I did anyway. Okay. This is simply to say the progressive, that progress never defines its ultimate objective, but thrusts its victim at once into an infinite series. Our vast industrial machine with its lab, uh, labor centers of experimentation and its far-flung organs of mass production is like a Parisianized state so it says Prussian Prussianized state which is organized strictly for war and can never consent to peace our returning our returning to the original figure our progressiveness are the least version of those pioneers who conquered the wilderness except that they were pioneers on principle or from force of habit and without any recollection of what pioneering was for. So that's the end of section two. Okay, now we got a number three in this article. Okay. Along with the gospel of progress goes the gospel of service. They work beautifully. They work beautifully as a team. Americans are still dreaming that mater materialistic dreams of their youth the stuff of dreams were made of were made on what the illusion of preeminent personal success over a material opposition their t tone was belly belly grants and the oh, euphorism under which it masqueraded was ambition. But men are not lovingly, and men are not happy for being too amb ambitious. Ambiguous. Ambitious. Yeah. Let us distinguish two forms under which ambition drives men on their materialistic projects a masculine and a feminine oh it's got the two things oh you might get in a little trouble or i might get in a little trouble oh gotta get comfortable here and think okay got wrong position okay Ambiguous men fight, first of all, against nature. They propose to put nature under their heel. This is the dream of scientists burrowing through their cells. And then of the industrial men who bog for their secret knowledge and to go out to trouble the earth but after a certain point this struggle is vain and we only use ourselves up 
if we prolong it. Nature wears out man before man can wear out nature. Only a city man, a laboratory man, a man cloistered from the normal context with the soil will deny that. It seems wiser to be moderate in our expectations of nature and respectful. And out of so simple a thing as respect for the physical earth, and it deems it teeming, teeming life comes a, a primary joy, which is an inexhaustible source of arts and religion and philosophies. Ambiguous men are belligerent, belligerent, I think that's what it is, B-E-L, belligerent, oh, belligerent, okay, I had to spell it out in my brain, okay, ambiguous, ambiguous, ambiguous men are belligerent also in the way they look fairly and enviously upon one another. And I do not refer to such obvious disasters as war and the rumors of wars. Ambition of the first form was primary and masculine, but there is a second form which is typically feminine. Though the distraction this, though the dis, uh, distribution between the disproportion, uh, the difference, uh, the big word between the sexes may not be without the usual expectation. If it is Adam's curse to be perpetually to work. His mastery over nature, it is Eve's curse to prompt Adam to every morning to keep up with the best people in the neighborhood in taking the measure of his success. There can never be stability and establishment in the community whose Every lady member is sworn to see that her mate is not eclipsed in the competition of material advantages. That community uh, will fume the firmament, fume and firmate, and every constant part will be in perpetual physical motion. The good life depends on leisure, but leisure depends on establishment, and establishment depends on prevailing magnanimity, which scorns personal advantages at the expense of free activity of the mind. Okay. Okay, so basically it's just breaking down everything. Oh, some of these words, oh, it's so old. Uh, and some of these words are so old and so it's been a long time and then it sounds so academic. And I, oh. Even though I was a sub, so, uh, most of the stuff is just not this college level education stuff. Uh, you are listening to the Loretta Nash show. show. Um, my name is, of course, Loretta Nash. Uh, you can see my artwork on Lore's blog, which is Lore, L O R G H. It's a play on my name. Uh, you know, Loretta, and then G for my middle name, and then H for my old name, my old, old name, uh, but I'll 
See you in a minute.